I don't know who will start. In the press conference, it was Bobby who started. And he will do that again. Yeah, I'll start again. Thank okay. you very much. And thank you for having me. Uh, I'm going to try to speak briefly. Is that, is, if we do 15H, 15 okay. Minutes is half of the, uh, okay, yeah, I can do that math in my head. Um, I, I just want to explain kind of how we got to where we are today with this issue, with the issue of non-Hodgkin's lymphoma and Monsanto, because as many of you know, glyphosate and Roundup has been associated in the public mind and in the scientific literature with many, many injuries with, um, for example, as a chelator of taking, removing metals from people's bodies, um, of interfering with the micro, with the human biome through the Shigami um, pathway and causing brain inflammation. It's been associated in various scientific papers with Alzheimer's, with obesity, with, um, with uh, autism, with non-fatty, non-alcoholic fatty liver cancer, which is now affecting kids who are as little as 10 years old, with kidney cancer, with brain tumors, and with non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, and a litany or a parade of other injuries. We have in the United States, in our legal system, something called the Daubert Standard, which is a standard where judges will not let a question get to a jury until, if it's a scientific question, they won't let the question get to the jury until it has passed certain standards of scientific reliability. And so none of those issues had enough stand, had enough scientific weight and volumes of scientific information to allow it to ever get past that gateway. When IARC in March of 2015 made its finding that glyphosate was a probable human carcinogen, particularly with non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, it triggered a cascade of other findings by government agencies, including the California Environmental Protection Agency. And that activity allowed it, created an inflection point where finally we were get, able to get through the gateway of the judge and get to a jury on, on Hodgkin's lymphoma. Because of that, a group of attorneys got together and began informing the public through advertising and we have today about, in the, the small group of attorneys, that we have about 8,000 cases of people who claim that they got non-Hodgkin's lymphoma because of exposure to glyphosate. So we tried the first case, we, Michael and I, Michael is the lead counsel, the lead attorney, the partner in the law firm, the lead law firm, Bob um, Hedlund, that tried this case in California last Last month, we picked one of those cases and tried that as the first case, and we got a judgment of $289.3 million. The, the jury had two different judgments. One was a $40 million judgment for compensatory damages. That means the damages for the medical expenses of our client, Lee Johnson, and for pain and suffering that awarded him um, money for those injuries, to pay his expenses, to live on, and to compensate him for pain and suffering. In addition, the, the jury, we were able to show the jury some of the information you're about to sh uh, see that showed that for 40 years, uh, Monsanto had been had known that glyphosate was a probable and Roundup were probable human carcinogens, and that they had been hiding actively and deliberately and purposefully hiding that information from the public. They were ghostwriting scientists. They were bribing scientists. They were capturing the agencies that are supposed to protect us from pollution in order to hide the science from the public. They were corrupting public officials and these kind of activities. And we were able to show that to the jury. And as a result of that, the jury made a separate finding, 
which was that Monsanto deserved punitive damages to punish it for its malevolent and oppressive behavior. And that's where the $250 million came from. So Monsanto now is facing another 8,000 of these same lawsuits, and Bayer is telling its shareholders, well, this is the worst one. Nobody else is going to give a, uh, a, a verdict of that kind. This was a San Francisco jury. San Francisco is a very liberal town. Um, but, and in fact, the jury we had was a highly educated jury. There were two scientists on it. The people took copious notes. They were very attentive. They had a long deliberation. And they, um, um, and, and it's possible that when we go out to farm country, and try case in St. Louis, which is Monsanto's hometown, and we're going to get less friendly juries. But on the other side, we had a judge in this case who was extremely, in her rulings, seemed to us to be overly friendly to Monsanto. So she consistently held on the side of Monsanto that we were not allowed to show evidence to the jury that we thought legally we ought to be able to show that jury. And in fact, about 80% of the documents that we intended to show the jury, the judge would not let us show. And we believe she committed judicial error when she made those findings. We would, if we had lost the case, we would have appealed, and we believe we would have won that appeal based upon the fact that the jury didn't see evidence that it should have seen. And we believe that in future cases, we're going to be able to show that evidence to the jury and show other evidence to the jury as well. One thing that Europeans ought to understand is that in every American case, you get discovery. So we can file questions and demands for documents to the defendant, and they have to produce them. And that discovery does not end now. In every case, discovery is reopened, and we will be able to depose under oath prior to trial the officers and employees of Monsanto, and we will be able to make renewed demands for documents. So I think Monsanto really, you know, Bear has a headache here that aspirin is not going to cure. It's going to be a continuing headache for them as long as these cases continue. I want to say one last thing, which is that um, this case was personally gratifying to me. Monsanto has made its business model, kind of its core business strategy for many, many years, has been handling chemicals that other corporations, more responsible and more ethically based corporations, shun. Um, Monsanto, I spent as an environmental lawyer almost 30 years of my life trying to get Monsanto's PCBs out of the Hudson River. Um, I fought Monsanto on many other chemicals, on DDT, on Agent Orange, and other things. When I was a little boy, um, one of the high points of my life during the years when my uncle was in the White House was getting to meet my hero, Rachel Carson, which my uncle, John Kennedy, arranged, and she came to my house for dinner. At that time, she was dying of cancer. She had just published Silent Spring the year before, And she was under a vicious, sustained assault by Monsanto. Monsanto had hired teams of of scientists that it had deployed to send around the country to say bad things about her. There were personal attacks. She was repeatedly called, because she was not married, she was called a spinster, which was a euphemism at that time for lesbian she was, um, she was accused of lying, of aggrandizing herself. She never defended herself because of her health. Um, My uncle, I'm very happy to say, um, rose up to defend her. At that time, she was under attack. Monsanto had not only was mounting a direct assault, but it had hired a a PR firm called Hill & Knowlton, which was at that time developing the strategy for the tobacco industry. And they used all the same methods that allowed the tobacco industry to escape regulation of a project product for 60 years that was killing one out of every five of its customers who used that product as directed. 
They compromised scientists. They corrupted public officials. They um, they did all of these. Uh, um, they they bought in. They paid off third party groups. For example, Monsanto paid off the American Medical Association, the American Garden Club, the Audubon Society to attack Rachel Carson. Even the United States Department of Agriculture, which was my uncle's department, was mounting an assault against her. My uncle John Kennedy appointed a group of the of the most prestigious scientists in the country to go line by line through Silent Spring, and they validated every single fact, essential factual assertion in that book, and they vindicated Rachel Carson. So I watched that happen as a little boy, and, you know, Monsanto's reputation preceded it, and I was so happy that I got to be part of this historic trial which once and for all brought Monsanto finally to justice in front of American jury. And now I'm going to turn it over to Michael, and he's going to show you some of the documents that we did show the jury and also some of the documents that we were not allowed to show the jury, but we will in future trials.